Aha, this week on the Modified World, I'm stabbing people and making shinies, so stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of the Modified World. It's the weekly web show about body modification. The people who do it, the people who get it, why it matters. I'm JC Potts. I'm the host. I'm the senior piercer at the world-renowned Pangea Piercing in beautiful downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. And of course, I'm wackiness, purveyor, internet, something like that. That's what they tell me, at least. And this week, this week I got to film myself piercing the tongue of a nice young lady. And when I say nice young lady, I actually mean young. She is uh, under the age 18, 17. Oh boy, gets to be a bit of a thing. So what is your name? I am Juliana. Juliana, what today brings you down to get your face to stab? Uh, it's my 17th birthday today. Mazel tov! So, how long have you been thinking about this? I've been thinking about this since I was 14. 14, mm -hmm. right on. And it's been probably a multiple year argument to try to get the parents to go along with it. Uh, actually, not really, like, technically, but the first time I asked, my mom was like, absolutely not. And I was like, all right. Then the second time, she was like, but why? And I was like, because it's cool. And she's like, all right. So it only took you two asks? Yep. That's even easier than converting to Judaism. <laughs> It's an ethical question. As body artists, we are sometimes put in the position of having to question ourselves with. My point on it is if you're old enough to convince your folks that it's a good idea, then you're probably old enough to get that piercing. You know, when it comes to those kind of suggestive sexual piercings, I draw the line at just like a tongue piercing on a minor. Don't kid yourself. I'm not going to be piercing your nipples or your genitals if you're under the age of 18. I don't care how much permission you have from your parents. That said though, tongue piercing, ah, I'm a little more on the, on the fence about that. And this person seemed to have a fairly mature demeanor. Talked to mom a lot and mom seemed barely convinced so I went ahead and did it. Now, would I do everyone that walks through the door? Probably not. Would I say that you should as a piercer? Probably not either. But I also like to leave it open to individual discretion. People mature at different rates after all. And that's, it's a tough one. I don't necessarily like to be, you know, a stickler for rules that are just kind of arbitrary like that. It's not like, oh, should it be sterile or not? Well, that's kind of, that's not an arbitrary question. But, you know, 17, 18, mm, you know, if they raise the limit to 19, would, I, would you be immoral for having done somebody's tongue at 18? I would say not, but you know, once again, your mileage may vary. <laughs> it's a brave new era. Holy, well, I shouldn't say brave new era. It's more like going back to the old school. See, because for years I've been shooting the, uh, the web series with, uh, with DSLR cameras, which are awesome. They really get the job done quite well, however, they're a little harder to use. They're bigger, heavier, you know. And, uh, well, so anyway, the whole reason I've been using exclusively DSLRs for a long time is my point and shoot. I had a bunch of batteries, but we charged them so many times that they wouldn't hold a charge. So I just bought eight brand new batteries. And of course, I had one of the last of the old batteries in the camera, and of course, it died midway through shooting. Hence why we stopped using them. But now we're rolling hard, cooking with gas, kicking some ass. I mean, easier to generate and share the happy content that we have access to. Paper. All screwed on the bottom. 
Bam! Look at that first try. You think I actually knew what the f I was doing. How you feeling? Pretty good. Does he not just lightheaded or anything like that? Nope. Still good to go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, she's even talking good. Right on. Well, I guess this would be the point where you get up and you go take a look and tell me what you think. Because I love it. Yeah! 100% satisfaction is all I expect and demand. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, have stabbing 17 year old tongues. And I always say this, and if you're mature enough to talk your parents into a more mature adult piercing, well, okay, if they think it's a good idea and you're able to convince them, then clearly you're mature enough to get a piercing and handle it. Sharps container. I've got a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of people asking me, JC, you know, I know you make that sweet, sweet bling. Why don't you ever show us exactly how you do it? When it comes to a lot of that stuff, there's... Whew, some of it's so trade secrety, I could never possibly give it away. Some of it also, too, the people that showed me actually how to do it are like, uh, the only way I can show you is if you promise not to show other people. And being a man of my word, if I make a deal with you that you're going to teach me something and I'm not going to show people, then I'm not going to show people. However, though, I can totally show you exactly how I make a nice threadless hammered disc for Neo Metal Jewelry. It's quite the process. I start off with a piece of casting grain, which is just what you wind up melting down to make castings out of. And I lay it over here on the dapping block and I peen it out flat with a highly polished ball peen hammer. Of course it's not going to be perfectly round so you take a little take a few strokes around the outside with a file to kind of round it out nicely to make sure it's a perfect circle. Then you're going to make a little dent so your drill bit doesn't walk and you're going to drill a little hole all the way through it. I go ahead and do all the way through for reasons that will become apparent soon. Well, after you drill it all the way through, you're going to need to clean that up a little bit because the drilling process makes a little burr. And it's good to go ahead and polish the back side of the piece because once you get it assembled, it's going to be almost impossible to give it a decent polish. So go ahead and sand that off flat and then I'm going to go over here to the laser welder now and take a little piece of 25 gauge 14 karat gold wire and feed it in through that hole and laser weld it in place. Laser welding is kind of an important step on this. Most of your artisanal makers of threadless body jewelry are doing it with a torch which destroys the temper of the wire, makes it really soft and malleable and that's why you lose them after two or three weeks of wearing them and why mine stay intact and beautiful for years. So anyway, after you laser weld it, then you're going to go back over here to the bench. You're going to set it down into the, uh, in the shellac pad. It's going to hold it in place while you go ahead and continue on with the finishing process. Now, my hammer hand piece has an anvil that has, if you look, a diamond set in a little steel anvil. That's right, a real diamond actually set down in the steel anvil. So I can screw that into my hammer hand piece and beat the ever loving hell out of it. You're actually hammering it. Most of your time your hammered finishes that you see are just a result of poor polishing. This is an actual hammered finish. And if you notice I turn the piece while I'm hammering on it so that the light will reflect off of different planes and almost like facets on a gemstone. So anyway, after you get it all hammered, then you're going to take it out of the shellac, run it through the ultrasonic and some denatured alcohol, clean all that setter cement off of there. And then go back with your rubber polishers, sand it off flat, give it a little bit of a polish to it, and chuck one of the little cylindrical shaped ones in there. Clean those sides up, make them nice and shiny. You know, you want a nice mirror finish on anything that's gonna be on someone's piercings. File the end flat on the little post wire that goes down into the, into the threadless post itself. Give it an ultrasonic cleaning and that's pretty much it. 
This piece is now ready to be installed in a nice happy person. What's even cooler is they bring it upstairs to put it on display and those nice young ladies bought it. Like almost immediately. How does that work? I love that when that happens. They're a super popular item because they catch the light a little bit, you know, they're just a little bit different sparkly than uh, you get with a standard gemstone or with uh, just something that's flat and mirror polished. Hi folks. Tell me what you think. Do you like? Let's, see, let's get the little close up. Oh, I always love it when it comes full circle. And that was my show this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something, possibly even remotely entertained. I do this all the time, so if you haven't subscribed yet, you ought to. And if you haven't been to my website lately, you probably ought to check it out. You guys have been screaming for years about, God dang it, JC, I'd love to be able to buy some of your exceedingly high quality jewelry online. And it's been a bit of a struggle. But I've been working on it myself and I've even got help. This is, a t this is just one tray of a tiny fraction of all the stuff that we have. So we're working diligently. I even got a full-time person helping me out on it. We're working diligently on getting all these new products up here for your happy purchasing pleasure so you can be blangtastic and happy. So, if you haven't checked out my website, PangeaPiercing.com, go over and check it out. Just let me know what you think. And be sure to stop back by next week for another episode of The Modified World.